everyone, this is Maki. Today I will once again talk about content that contains spoilers from the movie Gundam Seed Freedom. If you prefer to watch the movie without prior information, I recommend that you watch the movie before tuning into this program. Director Mitsuo Fukuda shared several pieces of information during the stage greeting. His attitude towards entertaining the fans is really wonderful. He not only talked about the content of the movie, but also discussed topics related to past seed series. For example, there was a discussion about the naming of the Dragoon system. The seed series includes many elements that appeared in the Metal Armor Drag no Ami. The Cavalier that appeared in the movie is also equipment that appeared in Drag Now. Mr. Fukuda was part of the staff for Drag Now. It seems to be a work that had a significant influence on his career as an Ami creator. The Dragoon system is a remote-controlled weapon that appears in the Seed series. In Dragno, mass-produced weapons called Dragoon appear. They analyze and integrate the performance of three types of Dragna piloted by the protagonists into one mass-produced weapon. Traditionally, mass-produced weapons that appear in Robodani are characterized by being weaker than the protagonist's weapons. However, the Dragoons appeared as mass-produced weapons that are more advanced than the protagonist's weapons. This setting is common in recent Dani works, but it was a novel idea at the time. Many fans have speculated that the name Dragoon in the Seed series may have come from the Dragoons in Drag Now. In this stage greeting, Fukuda officially mentioned that the Dragoon in Seed inherits its name from the Dragoon in Drag Now. Now let's analyze the topics related to the content of this movie. Did you press the subscribe button? From here on, we enter the fleet of the Kingdom of the Foundation. Many fans were captivated by the performance of Shinosuko's Destiny Gundam spec, too with its powerful Shadow Clone attacks. A lot of people were surprised by it. One wonders what kind of principle is behind this attack. When Destiny Gundam first appeared in Sea Destiny, it performed a similar attack. However, at that time, it performed Shadow Clone attacks similar to the Transam system of Gundam Formula 91 and Gundam Double O. It was an action where after images followed the main body. In the movie, independent clones were created from the main body. It was similar to the God Shadow special move that appeared in G Gundam. Mr. Fukuda said the following about this Shadow Clone attack. Actually, I haven't thought about the detailed settings yet. The Seed series has special setting staff, starting with Mr. Shigeru Morito, who make detailed settings for the mobile suits. It seems that the battle of Mr. Morito and his team is just beginning. I'm looking forward to the release of setting materials and other publications to see what kind of settings will be revealed. What kind of technique do you think it is? I'll give a personal interpretation. First, could it be that it's not really cloning when Destiny Gundam performs the Shadow Clone attack? Golden particles are generated. Please pay attention to this when watching the movie. Golden particles are generated both when the clone is created and when it disappears. The golden particles of the Mighty Strike Freedom are similar to these. The movie's prior describes them as Nasha particles controlled by psychic sensing. In the first half of the movie, Griffin of the Black Knight Squad manipulates Kiro's mind and shows how illusions may be the Black Knight Squad pilots, so illusory clones. Let's also look at the sound effects. When the Destiny Gundam attacks with its sword, there are several sounds of the engine firing. 
If the essence of the clone was an image projected by the mirage colloid particles, no sound would be produced. If you think about it, it's possible that the shadow clone attack that the Black Knight Squad pilot saw was a non-existent illusion. Ha! Huh? Shouldn't sound be generated in space at all? Well, let's not worry about the details. There are similar effects in previous Gundam series, because Owan appears in Gundam Formula 91. He has undergone modifications, replacing most of his body with machines. In the final battle, he is defeated by the Shadow Clone attack of Gundam Formula 91. It is often misunderstood, but Gundam Formula 91 does not have a cloning function. When Gundam Formula 91 performs limit mobility, its entire armor suffers peels off during forced cooling. While it retains roughly the same silhouette as the main body, it's only the peeled armor that grows from the heat, appearing like an afterimage to the naked eye. However, weapons like mobile suits use computers to process the images captured by cameras and project them onto the cockpit in a way that's easier for pilots to see. The same phenomenon happens to Kazo's mechanical eyes. It seemed to him that Gundam was cloning itself. Kazo's overconfidence in his mechanical superhuman abilities led to his defeat by Gundam because he could no longer perform the act of seeing with his own eyes. It might also be interesting to consider that the Black Knight Squad, overconfident in their abilities, was defeated by a similar phenomenon. Of course, this is just my personal interpretation. There are flaws in this speculation. Hildo Hakan uses the clone of Destiny Gunnam for a coordinated attack. Just before Hilda defeats Redeard, Destiny Gunnam disappears into golden particles. Hilda carried out attacks with the clone. It seems that she could see the clone. Of course, it's possible that Hilda and now Lyokshin knew Destiny Gunnam's abilities in advance. What do you think? Speculating in various ways is also a fun experience with the Gundam series. At the beginning of the program, I mentioned that Mr. Fukuda was greatly influenced by Metal Armor Drug Now. In fact, there are scenes in the movie that are influenced by Drug Now. In the previous program, I introduced that the scene in which the destroyed Gundam is defeated uses the same composition as the final battle in Dratgo. In addition, the Cavalier F3 is also equipment that appeared in Dratgo. Both were created by designer Kuni Okawara. It seems there was more. Somewhere in the movie, elements related to drug now were inserted as a playful touch by the staff. Mr. Fukudo Nasayakuri mentioned in the past, there was less awareness of rights in Nani and other works compared to today. It was common for characters from other works to appear out of context in an Nani. If this were to happen today, it would cause a big problem. It seems that a character from Dragna might appear somewhere in the movie. I haven't been able to find her yet. Please look for them when you watch the movie. Since Dragna is a work of Sunwise, the same company behind the Gundam series, the appearance of characters from that series should not be a problem. Many fans were surprised by the appearance of the Zugok. In fact, the scene where the Zugok stands up in slow motion was not Mr. Fukudo's idea. Mr. Fukudo said that I didn't expect the Zugok to become such a big topic. The scene where the Zugok stands up was suggested by one of the staff members. He is someone who really loves the Zugok. The Zugok piloted why Afrin stands up in a manner similar to Shaw's Sugok in the original Gundam. 
The music played in the background also resembles the music of the original Gunnam. It's clear that, with Mr. Fukuto at the helm, each staff member's passion for the Gundam series is cherished and reflected in the work produced. Many people might be curious about the relationships between the characters. In particular, will Kagori and Shin be reconciled after their major conflict in Sea Destiny? Mr. Fukuda said the following, just like here on Bradfield, their relationship is not one where they are dragged down by emotions from past events. Shin and Kagari, as well as Shin and Mu, have overcome past events and built a good relationship. When you calmly analyze the cause, you come to the conclusion that the phenomenon of war is bad. In a previous program, I talked about Campus being an organization led by Kagali. In fact, it's probably because his relationship with Kagali was good that Shin joined Campus. Personally, I was worried about the relationship between Shin and Mu. If it were Shin from the middle of the Sea Destiny story, he might have harbored intense anger toward Mu. Just like he showed the look of hatred towards Kira and Freedom Gunnam. However, after overcoming the war and after rest and reflection, Shin seems to have come to the conclusion that the war itself is the cause. Furthermore, Mu also had sincere feelings for Stella when he was active as Neil Roanoke. He realized that sending children to war was a foolish act. However, it's also a fact that Stella, living as an extended, could not survive away from the battlefield. This is discussed in more detail in the novel. Neo used the analogy, what happens when you pity a fish kept in a tank and release it into the sea to keep Stella within the military organization? He fought with the determination to at least protect Stella's thing and all with his own power. Perhaps there was a scene where he seriously discussed such thoughts with Shin. Not being trapped by past events doesn't mean indifference. Mu too must have calmly analyzed his actions and discussed them with Shin, which is why they have a good relationship. Furthermore, analyzing Mr. Fukudo's remarks, it becomes clear that Mu retains the memories of his time as Neo Ruino. It seems that the personality of Neo has not disappeared, but has been integrated into Mu. The Akatsuki equipped with the Zeus silhouette looks a bit like the Gundam Haruto from Gundam Double O, especially the legs. The pilot is Alu Haptism, who has a dual personality. Is this a coincidence? Well, it's definitely just a coincidence. It has been mentioned in the past that Kira and Dolphy share similar genetics. In fact, it was discovered that Laos was attracted to Kira, who had similar genetics to Ophi. However, through various experiences, Lois comes to love Kira regardless of genetics. Had her feelings been based solely on genetic information, she might have chosen Murphy. It was not genetics, but her love for Kira as an individual that led Lois to choose a life with him. Mr. Fukuda also mentioned that there was another character with similar genetic information in Grit. She was created as a being with similar genetic information to lawyers. This may shock some people, depending on their interpretation. Weingrit's feelings for Ophi, created by genetic information? Or like Lars, did her feelings arise because she loved Ophi as an individual, not because of genetics? I think Ingrid's feelings came from her own heart. This aspect seems to be left to each fan's interpretation. In the novel, the members of the Black Knight Squad, who saw Lars for the first time, had extremely positive feelings for her. They looked at Lars with eyes filled with unbridled joy, as it is described. 
This is a little off topic, but there is also a description of how Kyo did not suspect the Black Knights because of the positive gaze she gave Lars. He did feel a slight discomfort, but he perceived it as extremely positive towards Lars. Back to Ingrid. Perhaps Ingrid was created with Lars like genetic information because it was convenient to command the Black Knight's cord. A rational ideology for achieving Lars' goals may have caused Ingrid suffering. By analyzing the finer details, you can better understand how Or is a formidable villain. Now, there is more information to analyze. I hope to discuss it with you in the next program. Until we meet again in the next program.